today we are going to start our birch tree watercolor painting and we are going to paint the sky which will be the background and then also the ground. We are going to start by drawing in a horizon line. The horizon line is where the ground and sky meet. It's a horizontal line and I've drawn mine about halfway up my paper. You can make your ground larger by drawing the line further up on your page or you can make your sky larger by drawing the line further down. I've drawn it very, very lightly, and I'm even going to come in with my eraser and erase it a little bit. Um, watercolor paint is transparent, so you can see through the watercolor paint. So therefore, we don't want this line dark, otherwise we will be able to see it on our final painting. When we are using watercolor paint, we don't have white paint, so we also need to recognize where we want to put our clouds. You can either sketch them in very lightly, or you can just visually think about where you want your clouds. I think I'll put one about here, one maybe off my page over here, and then a third one closer to my horizon line. I'm going to use a watercolor brush, which is a soft brush like a mop. Today we're using a watercolor technique called a wash. So we use a lot of water and basically wash the paper with color as we are painting. I'm also using liquid watercolor, so I need to dilute my paints before I start to use them. So I am going to make some areas on my palette, just water. And then I'm going to think about the colors that I want my sky to be. We often think of the sky as blue, but to create some harmony and depth in my picture, I would like to use a little bit of blue-violet and violet. So this is a group of analogous colors. They are three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, and they go well together. So they will work well in our sky. So I am now going to dilute my paint I'm going to take some purple and add it to the water. You can see I still have a nice purple there. I'm also going to take some blue and add it to this water. Okay. And then I'd like to make my tertiary color of blue-violet. So over in this spot, I will add some more water. Clean my brush a little bit so I just get water. It's okay that it has a little blue in it because I'll be making a blue-violet. So add some water here. Add a little bit more blue. Add a little bit of violet so that I get a blue-violet color. Now as I paint my sky, I do want to use a lot, of, a lot of water. My paint, I need to remember, will dry lighter than it appears when it's wet. I'm going to start with some blue paint on my brush and I just try to paint horizontal, thinking about that the wind is blowing across the paper, leaving a white spot for my cloud because I don't have white watercolor paint. So anything that I want to leave will be white, I need to leave white. I'm gonna kind of put another cloud right here towards the top in the middle. Clouds are organic shapes, so as I paint, keeping that in mind that they don't have an exact shape to them. I want mine to be maybe more wispy clouds. Now I have some blue down. I'm going to add some of my other colors. I'm going to add a little bit of the violet up along the top. The sky tends to appear a little bit darker as you move away from the horizon line.
next step is I'm going to paint my ground. In the ground, I'm going to use another group of analogous colors. I'm going to use some green for the grass. I'm also going to use a little bit of yellow, green, and yellow so that I can have um, a depth or a variety of colors in the ground and then it won't look flat. So I'm going to paint my grass now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some green on here. Again, trying to paint horizontal, nice and soft. That green is fairly light. I'm going to go ahead and make my add some more to the well to make it more intense. Going to add some splashes of the yellow green. Peaks of sunlight might be coming through and hitting that area. And I try on the ground not to blend all the colors together, to really have some areas that are going to be green and yellow green, some areas that are dark and light. the paint's going to dry lighter than it appears, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my paint on my ground is pretty intense. All right, so there I go, I am finished. When you are finished, if you can leave your painting right where it's at, if you're working at home, that would be great. Just let it dry right there. If you need to move it, carefully carry it and allow it to dry flat. 